Hello everyone and welcome to Thursday Live Lesson. My name is Aldrin Guerrero, joined by Mr. Aaron, the voice not commercial. What's up, Aaron? What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend for again. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? So all the boys are here. We're going to be answering some questions. Uh, how this, the, how the show works is you guys give us your questions and we give you our answers. I come up with a, you know, with an answer that, that I can come up with on the spot usually. And then these two guys pretty much come in with their two cents. And uh, we come up with a mega answer just for you. And if not, if we don't have any questions or anything, we usually just have some nice discussions. And this is live. So we call it Thursday Live Lesson because it's a nice discussion. So and we basically come up with the, you know, with, with the lesson and based on whatever we're talking about, right? Let's see, it's a nice it's life <laughs> lesson. <laughs> nah, nah, it's, it's, it's cool. We just kind of discussed some stuff. This is um, an audio podcast as well. So thank you folks so much for downloading us via your uh, your whatever podcast app that you use to listen to a podcast. So thank you very much for that. And special thanks to all of you U Plus subscribers who are watching live and who are watching the replay. So, uh, Kahai, do we have any questions? Uh, no, we didn't really get any questions this week. Uh, we got like, um, so this week was like the deadline for our yes. live lesson challenge. Yes, yes. And we actually did get like two submissions. So. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, cool. that was, that was cool. We got, I gotta go check them out. I haven't, I haven't been on the forums yeah. uh, yet, but I'm going to go check those out right on. So we'll give both of them a, you know, a, a little prize and stuff. I didn't bring any prizes today, but maybe it'll just be, a, they'll, we'll keep it as a mystery prize because Ooh. I will, I, uh, I will put something in there. But I don't have it with me right now. It'll just be a mystery prize. How about that? Who 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 did it? Uh, Alan and then uh, Kavai. Kavai, yeah, yeah. yeah so figured, nice. figured. Those yeah. and both of, suspects. <laughs> both of them kind of did like uh, Hawaiian, like uh, oh yeah. Alan especially did like slacky, but Kavai did mm-hmm. his little like you know. Uh, did anybody do some uh, funky slacky. time signature? Um, I don't think so. I think both of them were pretty standard, but okay, they're both like. Pretty cool. So. Cool. So towards the end of the show, we'll be uh, setting up a brand new challenge. So for those of uh, for those of you folks who did do that, Kavai and Alan will give you something. You know, um, just we'll send you something. So if we we have both their addresses and stuff, right? They've won before. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So you know, we have you on file. We'll send something nice. It'll be a really really cool so but and we want to encourage all of you guys to try this out because this is really fun we have a blast every time we do this so it's um, like a songwriting challenge yeah so. a songwriting challenge for those of you who don't know what we're what we're talking about we have a songwriting challenge here on thursday live lesson we do it pretty much um once or twice a month right yeah because you know, like uh three weeks or something two yeah. weeks uh every three weeks about yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so every three weeks we do this and uh for uh Every pretty much everyone who's uh, who's submitted something we've given something to, right? So mm-hmm. um, everybody pretty much gets a prize. And if there's a lot of submissions, we do a uh, a raffle and we raffle out a uh, kind of a big prize. So mm-hmm. let's uh, let's let's keep doing that. We're going to be doing one at the end of the show, so we're, we'll revisit that a little bit later. But um, you know, so we have two this week. We'll give them something nice. I don't know. Um, what's yeah? I'll, I'll I'll do a little surprise. <laughs> a little surprise. Yeah, not it's not like it's nothing much. Usually, like we. We give like I think one of the um, one of the prizes that we've given away were like uh, little Christmas ornaments. I was during Christmas time, you know, I gave away like little Hawaiian Santas with like uh, with with ukuleles on. We've given away CDs. We've given away like stickers, and we've given away um, coffee, Hawaiian coffee. We've given away Hawaiian macadamia nuts mm. and and like what like was, like lihing, uh, lihing yeah. mango, <laughs> like kind of Hawaii specific yeah Hawaii snacks specific stuff and, yeah uh, <clears throat> treats yeah stuff. so it's really cool. So if you uh, if you wanna you know, if you want a chance of winning some Hawaiian snacks for yourself and trying them out and stuff, all you gotta do is write a tune uh, based on the um, the rules that we've set, which is not that hard. I think this time is just as long as you're in the key of C and have one major chord, one minor chord, you're mm-hmm. all good. So, I think even like uh, last time, the not this challenge, but the last challenge mm-hmm. we did, mm-hmm. uh, we gave every everybody who entered, we gave them a CD that's like, oh yeah, not, like really... not in print anymore. Like yeah, not in print CDs. So, which uh, I was on eBay. Uh, this because I'm constantly on eBay now that I've started collecting cards and stuff. I'm on eBay kind of a lot, and you know, <laughs> I was like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go check up on like on my albums and stuff. And the Sweet Four Nine album going for guess how much, Kahai. Which is my first album, Sweet Four and I, my very first album back in two thousand seven. Uh, Guess I feel like any, it's not it's not that much. But, yeah. <laughs> so, I feel like any price I say it though is gonna be. Uh, I'll not, tell you if you're cold or hot. A hundred dollars. Uh, you're a little cold. 
I don't know in what direction to go. Oh, down, down, down. go down. It was at that point. It was at one point. Two hundred dollars. At one point, the highest I've seen is like two hundred something dollars. It's ridiculous. It's like it's like the last time when I said like, oh, if you if you, it'd be funny if you won the Nahoku and yeah. like you're clapping on stage, right? Yeah. So, or you're clapping and waiting, and somebody was like, if he wins, yeah. like he will win. So I don't want to be like, oh, it's it's. This and ah, how dare you? I see, I see, I see, my I see. CD is worth more than that. <laughs> no, it's not. It's definitely not. We're we're, we're giving them away here. <laughs> that's uh, that's that's uh, not you know not that expensive there. But you know what? They are out of print and stuff. So they're mm-hmm. um, some people consider them collectibles because they only print one thousand of them. So if you have one, that's one out of a thousand, and it's like a pretty firm like a uh, firm number. And out of that one thousand, like I usually keep about ten twenty for myself. So out in the wild, there's maybe 980 of them if uh, if they all sell out and stuff, and and they're pretty much all sold out. Uh, but I do keep some for myself, and because there's only a thousand pieces, um, I I don't have those CDs for longer than maybe half a year to a year. So like that 2007 album was only really sold in 2007. 2008 came. There's there's nothing, and I think I made an, another album in 2008 or nine, and then that sold out. So it's it's one of those things. I like. I like that actually. I really like when uh, when when things become collectibles because uh, to be fair, you can just go to like Spotify, you can go to uh, like iTunes, you can buy the entire like library and stuff. It's still there, like uh, it's it's on iTunes. But if you want like a physical copy of the CD, CD itself, like I worked hard on, like I, I collaborated with like with artists and stuff. The first one was Bradford Barris. I've coll- uh, collaborated with some artists like. Uh, well, Bradford Bear is the guy who who did um, Ukulele Underground, which is the guy who the logo. did the logo for Ukulele yeah, yeah. Underground, and he did Bandito Tyler and Sweet 409, and I collaborated with Jake Smithies from uh, from the UK, who's part of the Dead Man's Youth. That was for the latest uh, Acoustic Robots love songs yeah. for the uh, album art. Yeah, yeah the album yeah. art. Yeah, and the the Sweet 409, that like mm. the, the picture of you. Is also that like picture you or that little design that you have on your YouTube? Yeah, on my ukulele. Yeah, so it's like. It becomes kind of like this art piece, you know, that um, that I just sold for like 10, 15 bucks and stuff, which is which is really cool. I've always really just wanted a physical, you know, like CD. I've always wanted it ever since I was like, you know, I, I ever since I bought my first CD, I'm like, I'm gonna get one of these, like, I'm, that has me in it, my music, and it did, <laughs> which is really cool. So I sold them off, and uh, on eBay they are going for bam bam, sixty five dollars. For that first CD, which is not bad, which is not bad. It was going for two hundred. I guess people don't care anymore. They're like, ah, I'm buy it for sixty five bucks. <laughs> Where did you see two hundred? Um, that was back in two thousand. It was on eBay. It was like two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve, or something. It was like, because I think it was one eighty plus like twenty bucks shipping or something oh, from yeah, like, yeah. Some, from somewhere crazy like Thailand or uh-huh. something, like, something like that. But um, yeah, I was, was it I was, signed? Yeah, mm, I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. But most of them that I that I sold in in 2007, they were pretty much all signed and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. But it's it's like 65 bucks. Kai, what do you think about that? That's pretty good. If, uh, yeah. <laughs> like uh, yeah, I remember selling CDs in the yeah. store for mm-hmm. well, not that CD, but other CDs in the mm-hmm. store for mm, like at the high. I think we sold them new for 20. Yeah. And then a lot of times it's like uh, we had a discount and stuff, so it was like seventeen bucks, fifteen to yeah. seventeen, 17 yeah. bucks. Yeah, cool. So, so um, and you mentioned the uh, the hokus. We'll talk about the hokus because I have something. I have something of a show and tell for for, uh, for that. Not not a hoku. <laughs> I don't have a show. I don't have a hoku for sure. Uh, show and tell. So that means I didn't win. But congratulations. All all our aloha we, goes to uh, goes to Chris Fuchigami. What? He he won. Uh, yes. Will we get in trouble if we got you like a baseball trophy and then we engrave <laughs> the Hoku on it? The runner up or whatever. Or, like, what if we, what if we change it a little bit? Ne Hoku or something. Yeah. So, maybe. <laughs> we can't we can't get us in trouble for that. No, right? no, no. I, I guess not. I, that would be under parody, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, <laughs> from your friend Hoku. <laughs> we have to we have to get something that clearly is not like the award though, where it's like yeah, a baseball trophy or like <laughs> one of those really weird trophies where it's like a pie for like a baking <laughs> contest or something. Yeah, um, 
So I, I went, uh, I took my wife, it was like, it was the Hawaiian Grammys, it was the first time that I've, you know, that I've been there for, so for those of you folks who grew up in Hawaii, who's heard of the Nahokus and stuff, it was really like a surreal experience, you know, just kind of, you look over there, there's like, you know, there's this person, then you look over there, there's that person, and people are like, wearing real, like, designer dresses, and I think I've said it in this show before, like, I, I watch Project Runway, you know, it's kind of my guilty pr pleasure, and, um, and one of the, uh, one of the, uh, past season like finalists, the ones that went to like Fashion Week in New York and showed like a 10 piece collection and stuff. I know way too much about the show. But um, Kini Zamora, like he's uh, he's from Hawaii and he like creates stuff. And I saw a bunch of like Kini Zamoras. I'm like, those are not cheap. Like, <laughs> so people are dressed to the nines and stuff with like their fringe dresses. Kimie was like in this gorgeous yellow gown, like, cause she's like, she's pregnant. So she had all these like cool little like ruffles in the front and like kind of accentuated her shapes but it was it was amazing it was like really like those dresses are easy like five grand or something for you know for one and it's like i i came there with with a barong that my mom gave me from the philippines that's like probably 15 dollars you know that had a blazer on top of it and stuff but um <clears throat> it was really fun and um i went there with uh with Joe and Kristen Souza and, and the Souza family, you know, the, uh, the the three boys and stuff. I saw, you know, our friends, uh, I saw Carly G there. She won for uh, R&B Album of the Year. So congratulations oh. to uh, to Carly G. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, Chris Fujigami, friend of the show, he won the uh, compo mm -hmm. like uh, Instrumental compo Composition of the Year, which is awesome. And that's for a song called Life Is. So if you guys haven't checked that out yet, Go check out the song "Life Is." It has won a Hoku, you know, that, um, that from this recording. As of this recording, it's, it's won a Hoku. So make sure you check that out. That's the one that won. So you know, that's well, good stuff. The the other people like because Taimani too, right? Yeah, Taimani from nominated. Water from. Ah, uh, she won um, favorite entertainer of the year, which is like a public poll and stuff. So I think she put it up on Facebook, and people just came and drove. I was like, yes, Taimani is my favorite. I mean. Who else is gonna win? Like honestly, yeah. like who else is gonna win that one? Taimane, she's like all over the place. She's like she's in Europe as we speak right now, like just like yuking it up, you know, and and showing everybody her stuff, which is awesome. Cause she's she's another friend of the show. Really, really, really cool chick. So congratulations to you. Let's see um who else won. But uh yeah, but Patrick Landeza won like some uh, some kind of you know some kind of award he's from the he's from norcal he usually puts up a lot of like the aloha festivals together so you know that's he's he's a huge part of the hawaiian culture community in norcal really cool dude um who else uh i think herb walter jr another friend of the show one it's it's awesome it was really 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 surreal to just kind of be there i've been watching that show since i was a little kid i saw no, my first no, nahoku that i saw it was like the kyle creator boys winning like their for you know for their album and stuff and it was it was like Gotta get there one of these days. And, and finally, 20 some uh, twenty or so years later, I was there. It's really cool. So, <clears throat> speaking of which, I do have a show and tell for that. So, the track that was um, was nominated for a hoku was a track that I did for a CD called Ola Kaaina. And it was called Aali Kumakani. And, um, and Kanilea graciously gave us... And each of us that did a um, a track on the album, an ukulele. So this is an Ola Kaina Kanile Ukulele 20th anniversary ukulele. So we were talking earlier about limited editions. This is as limited as it gets as far as Kanile goes because there is, how many tracks in that CD? 12? So this is one of 12 ukuleles. It's a 20th anniversary Kanile Ukulele ukulele. So there, this is one of 12 of those ukuleles and it has Ali Kumakani right here so each person who uh, you know who wrote a song had like has their uh, song title uh, engraved so this is one of one then yeah I want one of one <laughs> but I'm talking just the 20th anniversary yeah because they you know they did do a 20th anniversary and I think they did a special like diamond seal or their diamond series or whatever mm -hmm. they, they have a specific you for the 20th anniversary but these uh, these ukuleles were only for the artists so this is one of uh, one of 12 or I don't know how many tracks and now maybe 15 or something but this is one of the nicest kanele uh one of the nicest sounding kanele ukuleles that I have actually it's like it's like super loud it's it it's it's got um it's got Aquila strings on it right now I was gonna go change it to mine but 
This is really, really, really awesome. I'm, um, I'm recording a track for the uh, for the play along, and I was like, I, sh I should use that uke. That uke sounds like a lot better than the other ukes you know that I have. So I'm gonna be using this. But I want to kind of show you folks um, the 20th anniversary Kanile ukulele from Ola Kaina. This is, oh, well, this particular one is one of one, but this is a part of a series of, I want to say 12. Mm -hmm. So this is really, really, really limited edition. Uh, Kanile Ukula. So for those of you like collectors out there, there are twelve of these floating around, <laughs> like in, in the world somewhere. So if you want to like complete your collection, you gotta get one of these. I'm not selling this one ever, so maybe <laughs> not this one. <laughs> or I don't know. I might get desperate one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, if you put that up though, like because it has the name of the song, right? Won't they like? Oh, it's. Oh, dream. Oh, so this so, is uh, so hard times for old Dream Guerrero. Huh? Uh, <laughs> looks like thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, so there's one of thirteen. So there's thirteen tracks. Um, yeah. So everyone, everyone who did a track gets uh, gets one of these ukuleles. So this is really, really, really cool. One of thirteen. Uh, let's let's take a uh, close up of this right here so people can see the engraving. Kale Ukulele 20th anniversary from 1998 to 2018. And before then, uh, Joe Souza worked for Lanikai Ukuleles. This is kind of when he started uh, making Kale Ukuleles in, in like in a small little shed, like a little with this white shed. There's like a picture on uh, at the Kale Ukulele factory of like the original Kale Ukulele. And um, it's, it's really cool. So they've come a long way. It's been 20 years. This is one of their 20, uh, 20 year anniversary ukuleles. What? What would be cool is like if we did something with Carly, yeah, and she, cause she has one, right? Cause she she yeah, did a song. Did. So if you guys play together with like your each of your uh, like yeah, uh, let's see who else has it. Jody has one. I think Craig and Sarah has one of these. Um, Does do Craig and Sarah have two though? Oh, they have one. Cra <laughs> they have uh, one. Only one. Yeah, only one. Yeah. One per track that you, have you, to, that you make. I yeah. mean, Honoka Zita's got one. You, know? you have to share. <laughs> I think it's Honoka Zita and, um, and Jody Kamisato. They all have to share one. one <laughs> well, like I wrote it. I mean, I was supposed to write with Craig and Sarah. So had I written that song instead, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I would have gotten, <laughs> gotten a Hoku. <laughs> I would have gotten a third of a ukulele. So I'm glad I kind of wrote one. And I think I've told that story before. It's, I wrote that song in like a day. <laughs> instead of getting a whole ukulele, mm. you would have gotten like visitation rights. <laughs> like you can see. Yeah, yeah. Hey, when, that's mine too. <laughs> when, whenever we go to like San Diego, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that sucks because I'd always be outnumbered. Like I only own 33% of it. Yeah. And uh, Craig and Sarah own 66% like, <laughs> together. So it's like. <laughs> Thank God they were in Europe, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's um, so uh, I also said that I was going to bring um, these ukes called I ukes that, you know, that, that I had my, uh, my, my daughter kind of play around with. And um, ever since I started working with um, with the, the string company, um, I can't think of their name right now. Uh, Akila. So it's ever since I started working. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I, ever since I started working with Akila. Like, uh, what were you going to say? I, I knew what it was. <laughs> yeah, but I was, I was just waiting. Like, I was like, <laughs> is yeah. it? Is this a trick question or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ever since I started working with Ocula, um, they actually, you know, they, uh, they, I think our partners with, with IUK and, you know, whatever, like, um, whatever I kind of had my eyes on and stuff, Akila is like, oh, do, do you like want one of those and stuff? I'm like, no, I have like a billion yukes. But I saw these yukes, so I'm like, no, nah, I kind of want one of those. You know, can you make that happen? Can you give me, can you give me some? Can, can you give it, give it, give it to me, give it to me? So I got one in China, actually. And, and I showed it here a long time ago and that was the prototype. And that one that I showed was, was the smallest that they had. So I think in order to make it into production, yeah, to make it a little bit bigger so that it doesn't like the break easily or whatever. So these are what actually went through production. They're called iukes. You guys ready? So this is a regular iuke. I gotta tune it. So these play.
See, oh, so we were talking about it a while back that like, oh, <clears throat> you know, like uh, you have your whatever positions like based on like how big your, you know, how big your hands are or how small your ukulele is. And some people are saying like, oh, my, my hands are too big for, for my ukulele. This is a super duper tiny you and have <laughs> massive, massive hands. Like my, my hands cover pretty much this, you know, the, the whole body of the ukulele and then some. So, but I still keep the same, you know, uh, the same form as I would with a normal ukulele. I point right here where I'm going to be strumming, and I put my um, I put my forearm down here, and uh, same exact thing on my left hand. Is that um? I know, but is it supposed to be uh, an octave up? Yeah. Oh, okay. But I don't want to tune it that high because it gets super like. And I don't oh. know if I don't have another pack of these strings. And <laughs> these are oh, I have special it. strings. <laughs> oh yeah, you do. Yeah. So, because that's what like, I use on on my on yours. Uh, well, where's yours? Yeah, let's let's compare this. No, I know yours is smaller. It's at right home. here, right? Oh yeah, it's at home. Yeah. Because I know his uh, yours is maybe like right here, right? Yeah. Because the prototype for this was smaller than the one that you have. But then they went bigger because they couldn't make it that small there was from, from what they were saying. So this is actually mine. And this is the one that my daughter like has. And oh, look how cute. Look how cute. It's a sunburst. I've always wanted a sunburst you. And my daughter gets one before I did. So uh, this is a sunburst ukulele. Um, it's a it's an I U. I I would I don't know what this sopranissimo because <laughs> yeah. uh, sopranino so this would be a sopranissimo I guess is what what I would call it. Um, sunburst ukulele has got a heart shape with a little butterfly on the uh, um, as a sound hole. And a cool little it's not a rosette really. You can see it's all banged up and she's just like banging it all. I don't know. If you can <laughs> see it see it like right here it's all oh no right. There's all gashes and like little dents and stuff. My my little kid just like like oh you can't do that to that uke, Ellie. It's just it's a special uke. And she just bam bam like on the <laughs> you know on the floor. I I told you about my dad's tipple, right? No, no. Like my dad ordered a tipple from Martin. Mm -hmm. um, one of his friends or like somebody came down to the shop and was like Oh, Aaron, you like ukuleles, right? Like, they're having a deal at Martin. You should order a tipple. So he, he like, mail-ordered it in. He got it, and I don't know if he, like, played it a lot. But one day he said he, it was on the, the mm -hmm. kitchen table. And I came home with, the like, car keys in my hand. And I just threw the car keys onto the kitchen table. And it landed straight Ooh. on top of it. And then he's like, oh, oh yeah, that is scratched. <laughs> but he's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Bye, sir. <laughs> yeah, I love this thing. So, like, uh, whenever I'm watching my kid and she just kind of lays it around, I'm like, ah, I'm gonna go pick it up. And some songs and stuff. So that's kind of my show and tell ukes for uh, for the day. I've uh, it is kind of overdue because i said i was going to show these ukes like a long 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 time ago but there they are these are the i ukes all the way from uh from europe so if you guys want to uh want to own one of these i think they sell these just go to iuke maybe iuke.com or something but what i did for my daughter because these um these strings are kind of a uh, um a little bit on the sharp side on the end because they're skinny right so what i did just kind of as a safety um i took a you know the the thing that we used to like the the gas ranges and stuff. I took the end of that and I burnt off the end so that it's like because it's plastic, right? So they just like uh, kind of rounded out the ends using a little bit of uh, flame. So it's cool. So she's not gonna like poke her, you know, mm -hmm. like poke herself with it or whatever, or poke her eye. <laughs> so it's really cool. It's safe, you know, for the most part. That's yeah, <laughs> that's that's smart because like even if you use like the clippers, right? Yeah, it'll kinda, still be yeah. a little sharp. And so I, that's that's what I did. I poke my like I've mm. the string have, has gone into my finger. Oh, really? pulled it out. And I'm like, oh, oh, I'm, oh. I'm I'm bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's the one thing you know I, I did worry about and stuff. And I was like, okay, well, you know, my dad did that when I when when I was young. 
So I did it for my kid, which is really cool. So these two are I use. And if I had one more, I'd give them away. But I have this one, and my kid has this one. So I can't really give them away. I would love to, but maybe it's just I, that, sh I should ask Ocula for Hey, can we give, can you get one for a giveaway? <laughs> it's really cool. Uh, let's see it in comparison to, um, to the other. So this is a tenor ukulele. And that's how tiny these are. <laughs> it doesn't even fit the string. Uh, maybe it only go like this. Yeah. Yeah. Screenshot! You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Screenshot! <laughs> There's, oh, but the hotel's back up. Yeah, it's <laughs> back up. Can you right uh, measure it? How, how long is that? Okay. Not, uh, we, have, we have a measuring tape right here. So measuring tape says top to bottom. Oh, it's iuk.eu. .eu. Oh, yeah, it is in Europe. It is... 15 and 3 quarters inches. 15 so like, inches. 15 and 3 quarter inches. Like a foot and 3 inches. Huh? Foot and 4 inches. Yeah. Just something, like, something like that. Almost a uh, foot and 4. That? Whereas the tenor Kanilea is. Boom, boom, boom. Ah. Twenty six and a half. Yeah, twenty six and a half. Mm -hmm. And sopranos are usually about twenty one. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Those are uh, those are ukes that I had laying in the house that I thought you guys might be interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, the, earlier, you're talking about like how people would be like, "Oh, my hands are too big," mm -hmm. but I think those the ayuk also like kind of can show the problem that. Uh, why people have trouble like strumming and mm -hmm. holding their uke yeah. most of the times is because they're moving their arm yeah. and if you move your arm with, with something that small right like if you try to strum with your arm of course it's not gonna you're not gonna be holding it to you there's so little already so that's that's us we can tune it to a to to Yeah, so Aldrin is still like strumming with, like twisting his wrist. Using nah, the wrist, it's only. like super tight. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Are you. <laughs> And even like my, my fretting hand and stuff, um, it's really just the tip of my you know tip of my fingers. Nothing changes. So for those of you folks who are using more of the pad of your you know of your fingers, that's why you're you know you're touching the other strings, and that's why you're getting this you know like that kind of sound. So what I'm doing, see, instead of this using my pad, I'm using the tip of my fingers. Mm -hmm. So you hear every single yeah. string. And I'm hitting it from an angle. Doesn't want to go that high. Yeah. Same exact uh, positioning, same exact form that I would use with a bigger ukulele, just like kind of condensed to this size. Mm -hmm. Can you very, try? Very tiny, can, huh? can you try and show like what would happen if you tried to strum with your arm? Because like. Uh, I wouldn't be able to like hold it. I can't even hold it. it. So, yeah, you know, like whereas the other ukulele, I can like lay it on my uh, lay it on my thigh or something, and just kind of play it like that. Mm, but even that, even then, you're not really moving yeah. your arm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I would have to move. It. Yeah, there's a lot of wasted and uh, movement. And even then, I'm still moving my wrist. Yeah, yeah. I and I think that's uh, some people like they use their arm with a bigger ukulele. And they can yeah. kind of get away with it because they'll use like the back part of their mm -hmm. arm is still closer to the elbow it's still kind of stationary and pushing it but then once they get to like a concert or a soprano right they're like oh i have such a hard time holding it and it's because that that part where it's supposed to be pushing down on the ukulele is moving all over so mm -hmm. you don't have good contact with your ukulele <laughs> yeah, man, I love this thing. Here, check it out, guy. 
All right, so those are uh, like I said, my my show and tell, like little ukuleles. Um, iu dot eu is that was that? Yeah, eu dot dot co or just dot eu. Iu dot eu. Just iu dot eu, I guess. So if you guys want uh, one of those, it's pretty pricey, right? How much is uh, one I don't, of those? I don't think they even sell them on the website. Oh, so you're gonna you have, have to, to like get look it through on a eBay distributor. Or some distributor. Yeah, uh, I think they're pricey. They might be like. Almost maybe like a hundred bucks for one, but then again, like a Super Nino, I think is like a hundred forty, two hundred dollars or something for for one of those Super Ninos. Yeah, from like Ohana. I I mean, people don't realize that it takes the yeah. same amount of effort <laughs> and time to make a tiny maybe, maybe ukulele. More. Yeah, yours maybe is maybe more like four hundred, five hundred bucks. Uh, yeah, I forget how much, it but was, but that the, that yeah. one is like um that was like a custom mm-hmm. maker, so mm-hmm. like I kind of told him how how yeah. large I wanted it to be, uh, but. Uh, yeah, so really cool. So I have uh, I have these tiny ukes. I should have brought though the original one, but that like it broke, so like you can't really play it like anymore. Because my cat, like I don't know, my my cat's kind of mean sometimes, and you know like how cat like knocks things off, like you know the like uh, the shelf. So it was on the shelf, it was just on display. Knocked it off, it fell, and um, <clears throat> it was like hard floor, and it just like chipped off like one of these, and it was like one of. <clears throat> where the the tuner was uh, so when i try to glue it back on it doesn't quite like uh stay mm. you know because oh well whatever <laughs> but it's still it's still whole it's you know it, it doesn't quite work ish the a string doesn't work but everything else does so i i'd like to just kind of display it just for as a display but this one cool beans love can this so can still fix it i think mm-hmm. yeah i have all the parts and stuff so Spotlight uh, on cool little dukes and a uh, little short little lesson on like form because really you know that that excuse is not that valid you know like the whole oh my hands are too big you know for uh, for this or whatever so I can't oh my left hand you know like is getting in the way you know and is touching the other strings and blah 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 it's um you know I mean it's fair to kind of touch the other strings if you know if your position is wrong. But you can't really like blame your fingers is what I'm trying to say. Like it's not your, you, you know, like it's not the 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 length of your fingers or the size of your fingers that is, you know, that's usually the problem. It's like how you're kind of positioning, yeah, positioning them. Yeah. So that's you know you want to rule that out. It's not you know it's not that. I think there's always and there's always something that you can kind of adjust yeah. to play. Mm-hmm. You know, you shouldn't let like physical limitations stop you. Yeah. Um, somebody that just came to our office and he showed us his ukulele. Yes. Like Tom, mm. he, how like he his fing- his ring finger is cut off or something. Oh, yeah, or, yeah, he's, right, yeah. He's like a professional woodworker. Yeah. Um, he was a furniture maker, and so he he pretty much lost one of his fingers. There's so only like half one a of those, finger like, there. It's just a matter of time if you're working with like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like with that. with power power <laughs> tools at yeah. that caliber. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but um. Yeah, and so he still plays ukulele, and I was, he still can mm. can do. He can't do everything, but yeah. he does what he does. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, yeah. he makes beautiful uke still. So yeah, yeah. I was like out there like playing with him, and then like you know doing some stuff, and he's like, "Oh, uh, yep, I can't can't play those bar chords because my <laughs> finger." Yeah. But then he yeah. was still playing like flamenco songs, and he mm-hmm. taught me like a song yeah. too to play it too. So cool, cool, it's, cool, cool, cool. I know there's like another person, another user on our site. Who, I don't know if they're also like a builder or whatever, mm-hmm. but, but lost a finger, uh, lost part of a finger, mm-hmm. and then they they were also playing. And it's like you're doing just fine, like with playing with you know yeah. what you have. So see, unless, kind of, you know, unless you like <laughs> lost your fingers, but still, I think it's all positioning. You know, like really, um, those uh, you know those excuses are really just like your fingers in the wrong position. You know, I like guess not mm-hmm. either that or using, you know, like a different part of your finger to kind of, you know, hold the chord down instead of like using the tip of the, you know, like tip of your fingers, your fingertips. You're kind of using your pad, the pad of your fingers. Maybe that's, you know, one uh, one way. Um, I do notice that like um, some women uh, with like longer nails, like they can't, you know, they can't do the uh, the fingertips because their nails are too long on the left uh-huh. side. So they kind of hold it like this. And that's kind of when it gets in the way. And that's why I say it's usually the, the, the pad from what I've seen from based on my yeah. own experience. Because yeah. like in order to 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 play the string, they kind of have to do it at this angle. And it's like cut at a bad angle so that like the nail, the long fancy schmancy 
like fingernails like up, up here like that but mine I keep this side short for that very reason keep this side long for uh, yeah for playing wise okay so um, let's get on with the show and let's talk about this brand new challenge that we're gonna have so get our, uh, can we answer some questions we sure some sure questions oh yeah we have that. some questions over right now uh, so Renee just asked, uh, do you play banjo lele? And then she said that later on, she said, I think they're cute, but I'm almost tired of playing it after one song. No, I think she was, oh, was she talking about the banjo lele or was she talking about oh, those? those? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's, she mentioned the banjo lele first. So um, I don't have a it. banjo lele. I, I mean, banjo lele is basically the same thing as, as an ukulele. So, um, I don't have one. I don't like the tone, you know, like it's just personal preference. Like a lot of people like that kind of banjo tone, but. Sounds too much like a banjo. <laughs> yeah, maybe just don't get a banjo, you know. Um, not for me. I mean, it's, you know, might be someone else's cup of tea, but not mine. I'm, you know, like I don't play the kind of music that would be, you know, that would be appropriate with, a, yeah. with the tone of a banjo uke. So I don't really, I don't really own one. Not hating on it or anything, just, you know, not, not my cup of tea. Because um, I think. The people who makes good banjo ukes makes really good banjo ukes, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, um, Aaron Kaim, you know, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've seen and played and heard his banjo ukes. Those play awesome. Like they, they can really sound good. But like I said, I don't think, you know, the kind of music that I play matches and it's a little bit heavy. This is some stuff that I have, you know, that I have problems with. But as far as like, you know, do I like it? You know, I'm, this is just not for me. That I do. I do like it, though. That is like something that's surprising is that the drum body does yeah. add a lot of weight oh, yeah. to it. So it's, it's way too heavy. Like it's the size of mm -hmm. uh, they make they usually make them like soprano sizes, right? Or soprano mm -hmm. or concerts. I've seen like tenors too, but then yeah, I yeah. think I've seen more soprano concerts. Mm -hmm. And you pick it up thinking like, oh, it's gonna be the weight of a soprano mm -hmm. or a concert, yeah, and then it's like, oh, this kind of yeah. like it feels like a little soprano with a Dense. calcin case <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, like that's basically what it feels like it's like i'm carrying my case around but um i don't know they're cool uh as far as getting you know getting tired i get that you know because it's so heavy and stuff so if you are talking with the banjo you i do get tired of playing those these uh these tiny little ukes i don't get tired of playing those I, I mean sometimes i have to watch my kid for like five six hours while my you know my mm -hmm. wife is doing you know like her her job and stuff so um for so for the most part i'm playing like one two hours worth of ukulele while she just kind of does her own thing and so, um on, on the, the tiny, tiny those tiny yeah, tiny ayuk. ukes yeah because yeah. if i grab the big one it's just like oh dad took the big one down and she's like gonna go and she just tries to like, <laughs> destroy it so i'm like okay i'll play the tiny ones she's like oh well it's just a tiny one you know <laughs> yeah. kevin uh said i can hardly fit my fingers on my tenor for d yes um he uses like a partial uh bar chord you mm -hmm. know uh, how do you finger the d chord on the iuk okay um same exact thing that i would use to uh, to play the d chord <laughs> it's not tuned <laughs> it's that c yeah, it's just that C chord. So, uh, same exact thing. So my pointer finger in the G string second fret. But notice like how I'm kind of you know holding my fingers. I'll put it this way. Middle finger on the oh this way. C string second fret. Also, just right underneath it. And ring finger on the E string second fret. So I'm kind of like making room, you know, like as a, as I go along and using really the, the just really the tip like tip of my uh, of my fingers. But it's still clear as that A string. See, see how it kind of kind of clears it on that side. You're kind of making it more of like a staircase, right? Like yeah. a little bit off from each other instead of directly under each other. But you know, you using it like with one finger and stuff, that's actually how I, uh, how I play it a lot. But it just depends what key I'm in. If I'm in key of G, I'll play it like this. But if I'm in the key of D, I'm gonna see. <laughs> that C string is going. Okay. Anyway, so um, I would I would hold it the same exact way. But um, if you want more advice in getting clean sounds out of your fretting hand, um, I know it's gonna be a little bit boring. But check out uh, "Songs Made Easy" because "Songs Made Easy" 
I've really, you know, I, I took maybe five minutes per chord or something. Like I really took my time mm -hmm. explaining each chord, where your finger goes, how your finger should be positioned and stuff. And it's really like for, you know, for, for beginners. But if you're having a hard time, look for a song that's in D that I've, uh, that I've done on uh, Songs Made Easy. And then I think maybe like Escape might have been one I might have done Escape. Mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, that that's definitely got a D in it. But... Um, <clears throat> Check those out. That's I kind of give you know like advice on how to get the curve in and like with the uh, the pointer finger, the tip of the pointer finger there, you know instead and just trying to make room underneath the uh, like I talk about a bridge and stuff and, and you know getting or can, something like that, right? Yeah. Can you can you show how you would play D on your tenor? Oh, like because uh, it looks pretty much the same, but then yeah, just on the tenor. So same exact thing. So if I were to do it on this, pointer finger once again, tip of my tip of my finger, doesn't change, middle finger right there, ring finger right there. Just kind of move it back so it doesn't touch the uh, the fret wire. And that's that's really it. So since I have more room on this, uh, it's not that like, you know, it's not that bunched up, but if you use the tip of your fingers, if you have to, like on the IU, Sometimes there, uh, there are some really chords that are bunched up like a, like a diminished chord that I would use like some of my nail. So I would like kind of do really like tip of my fingertips including like the nail because that's all you really need. Like you need to kind of hold it down like this. So I almost never unless I'm playing like B flat use the pad of my fingers unless I'm um, playing more than one string. I would not use the pad of my fingers to, uh, you know, to to hold the string down. So if I'm playing B flat, if I'm playing any uh, uh, any chord like bar chord or any chord that like would would require me to, excuse me, play more than one uh, play more than one string, that's when I use the pad of my fingers. But for the most part, I pretty much use the fingertips, and the ayuk has kind of really like you know shown me that like okay, well my form is really good because I can still hear. You know this all the strings coming out even though all my fingers are kind of bunched up so form is pretty good pretty important <clears throat> next question yeah so uh ken yeah. had a comment for d he uses a similar fingering to g7 yeah or or a partial bar but right, right. So sometimes I, that I showed that, that like yeah. um, early when it when i was in g mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, like why are you doing this to me I'm, no i guess I'm, i could just like tighten the thing so like it doesn't mm -hmm. stretch back I'm a so tiny anyway because when i play g i like to use my pointer finger as the um as the anchor so uh, right here so g right so i'm holding up uh, i'm holding down all three for the g keeping my pointer finger there my ring finger goes back like this and then middle finger goes to the top string, second fret. So that kind of looks like your G7. Yeah, you yeah. Like this. but just all on the same yeah, fret. on the same fret, like like so. See, uh, it's kind of bunched in there, but they're all clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it pretty much is what works for you. And if it gets in the way, then you should figure out a different way to do it. I'll just use the, the sunburst one because I, didn't, I don't think I tuned that one back up and this is slipping. Okay. So let's put a D. Every single note coming out nice and clean. Same thing with this fingering. Same thing with this fingering. Mm -hmm. I don't. When when you're holding D with that like kind of that um, uh, G seven or F sharp minor like chord shape. Yeah. To like a trick with those kinds of shapes, especially like you, you should try to be careful with all your fingers. But the fingers in the back, like especially that that pointer finger, right when mm -hmm. you're holding that chord shape, you kind of don't have to worry too much about it touching the back fret as long as yeah. you're like yeah. the point of con your main point of contact mm -hmm. is within the fret. Mm -hmm. So if it's like kind of like starting to touch that you know the mm -hmm. e string even yeah. or stuff is like because you're holding the e string further down on yeah. the ukulele like you don't have to worry too much about it making 
uh, brushing, buzzing mm. noises or mm. muting the string too, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, yeah. That's like yeah, I think that's things. a that's an important point too. You don't have to be between the fret wires exactly. You yep. just kind of have to be. Ha your finger just has to be. As long as it's not touching the fret wires. So yeah, as long as it's not touching. Behind, yeah. yeah. You can even touch the fret wire behind. Yeah, it. that's what Kahai yeah. was saying. Yeah. So like, if you're holding G seven. So there, I'm 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 uh, playing the C string second fret. It works here, even if I like bring it down here. Even if I'm touching that one. Because what's standing out really is like yeah. part of my uh, part of my nail. And if you if you hold like the full G seven chord, like um, that that pointer finger, you don't really have to worry about it hitting the A string either, right? Because your your that's right. ring finger is touching the A, so a string. I kind of hold it down like this. So that's I think that's one thing that that's why like beginners get tired and they get tense is because they're trying to fit everything so precisely when there's like these little shortcuts that you can kind of relax your fingers on and you don't have to be as worried about you know nailing every string uh, every note of the chord yeah play some blues in this thing <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, so anyway. fun. So fun. Sorry, so fun. It's just so much fun. <sighs> and it's like super easy, you know, because it's like really tiny. So I'm just like go crazy <laughs> on it. It's, it's fun, man. It's all I do at home. <laughs> I'm like watching my kid. Like, oh, don't go there. I gotta like, put it down. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Any more questions before we move on to... Uh... Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. So... That's issue a brand new challenge for the uh, for the songwriting challenge. So let's uh, erase this. Does anybody have water that I can or <laughs> alcohol or something? Do we have alcohol here? Uh, I can use to wipe this off with. I don't think so. <laughs> but I think Aaron's gonna go and get like a, a paper towel. Water. Something I was thinking about for the next challenge. Yes. What if for what if for one of the bonuses mm -hmm. we say that you have to use or not incorporate like a certain um, oh, melody line? We do have. Oh, nice. What do you mean? Oh no, that's a bit tough because if we say we have to and stuff, but as a who bonus, don't really do. Um, oh, this this is, like leaking. Anyway, so. What do you mean? Okay, explain explain your... So like the, the main challenge can just be using chords, right? Right, right? But for like the bonus, like how we say lyrics and stuff, ah. we say like you use these notes and not, not even like specifically in, you know, a, a certain rhythm or anything, ah. but use, try to use these notes as like a melody to incorporate within the song, you know? Okay. Yeah, I was just worried with, with your wording. It was like... That would we be the main to, challenge. Have to. No, like, oh no, 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 we can do that. <laughs> yeah. So okay, yeah, yeah, that works. So um, let's see. I can come up with like a you know, uh, but let's let's figure out the key first, mm -hmm. and I'll come up with some kind of riff. So okay. So what what key we did C? I think we did F the other week. So what our uh, key do you guys want to do? Mm -hmm. I think crazy Alan. Alan was like oh, E flat or something like. Come on, the first not time, everybody yeah. like knows how to play an E flat. We want to open this to everybody. So like probably saying it in a, a natural key, like just something yeah. that's yeah, something that's not hard like, or sh sharper flat. Like G or D. Or <laughs> well, what a. what were the last few? I think C, F, and G. <laughs> so let's do one. And what do you guys think? Maybe. Uh, what if oh, we... audience? What does the audience want? D, since we've been talking about D. D. Okay, D. Well, Alan just said, like, I don't think we've done A. I think we have. Yeah, we, we have. We've done A. Yeah, we've done A. <laughs> so, key of D. All right. So, what our uh, what is our what are our requirements? Mm, should we, like uh, 
I like the one major, one minor. That, that was really like easy and fun. But let's do something along that line. Oh, we could do that again. Just do mm-hmm. one major, one minor. Okay. Or we could we could set a specific uh... two majors. Just have two major chords. <laughs> <laughs> two majors and one minor. And I think that's because like I think Alan and Kavai both did two majors yeah, two and two majors one, one minor, minor anyways. So okay, not that hard. Let's make it a little bit harder this uh, this week, which is. Two majors this time. Two major chords in the key of D and two minor chords. How about that? Two and two. No, let's go one. (laughs) (laughs) It's a little vicious. Let's go one minor. One minor chord. One minor chord, two major chords. All right, so that is as far as what you have to have in there. That's it. You wanna, um, you wanna put down what can be the chords, like what could be okay, the major yeah, chords sure, and sure, what sure. could be underneath them. So here, uh, I'll, I'll put down all the notes in D. So we have D, we have E, we have F sharp, we have G, we have A, B, C sharp, and back to B. So this means that that is major this is minor this is also minor that's major that's major this is minor and this is a diminished so we have d e minor f sharp minor g a major b minor c sharp diminished and we got a d all right so those are the chords you can choose from pick two majors which uh, which are d g and a or if you want to get gutsy you can actually you know, like step outside this box, but still be in the key of D. We're not gonna give any uh, hints on that one, but you can can have more than these chords here. But this is in the key of D. Okay. So, um, what are the what's the genres that you guys want to do this uh, this time? So we did disco, we did reggae, we is did this... like cowboy, <laughs> American folk. Is this uh, the genre at this point though? Th- these are bonuses. Yeah, yeah. These are these are bonuses. Let's okay. do. A Beatles sounding song. We haven't done one like that. They could sound like something that the Beatles, Beatles. Would write. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. That's tough. <laughs> I guess you because you could choose any. Yeah. Any one. Uh, any any uh any any Beatles like wanna, Beatle uh, era. Yeah. <laughs> era want. of Beatles. You want to put bonuses so yeah, they know yeah. that it's a uh, at this point it's just extra. Yeah, the main bonus. part is two majors <laughs> and one minor. This is red doing here. Red clothes. What movie is that from, Kahai? Uh, Rocco or Doug? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Tell you, have you seen that movie before? Yeah. That's great. I just went to your normal, so... <laughs> <laughs> I am a great magician. Your clothes are red. You remember the part? Yeah, yeah. See? I knew I, knew I liked you. <laughs> All right, so bonus. Bonus. We have Beatles. Right? A beetle sounding song sounding <laughs> okay which, which means that it's probably not just gonna be in <laughs> like the chords from from the yeah. key of d family yeah, i mean like oh uh, that's true <laughs> oh, can't, if, can't if you want to take it more. full serious like you know full <laughs> beatles mode and yeah i guess but you can still write a beatles song that's you know that's in just these chords. All right, uh, what's another one? Go ahead. Uh, we always do lyrics, right? Lyrics, yes. Uh, do you want to do time signature again? Like, mm, we did, no, we, we do that. Every, we do that every time. I think. Yeah. Let's pick something a little bit more. Uh, in, okay, instead of time uh, time changes, make um, make f- let's do fast chord changes. One or two beats okay. per chord. You know, like. Fast chord change is what I should say. Fast chord change. That yeah. means so if the if the song well, I'll, I'll show you using my ukulele. So this is what I mean by this. And it's still like don't don't think of these like bonuses as oh man they made it super hard because it's actually not not that bad. Because you don't have to do yeah, the you bonus. don't have to do those also. What? Like, uh, why don't you show them what like if yeah. what they could do with just the minimum? Oh yeah, like, so what... with just the minimum, uh, just the two majors and one minor. So two majors, I you know I can pick maybe D and A, and maybe B minor. So this is my one minor, so I can do. This is a song that I wrote 
that's a Beatles sounding song. I just have to talk about the birds and the sky and things that I would see while I'm asleep. <laughs> I don't know, you know, something like something like that. But that's just D B minor. I had I had a G in there and stuff, but that's just from basic D. Um, you know, I did add like some Beatles ish, but you don't have to. You can just be like, I'm writing a song that's in D. Gonna go to a minor now. Back to A, cause I have two major chords to pick from. You know, so you have D, A, and B minor, or you can go D, G, E minor, that's also in the, you know, in the key of, uh, in key of D, you can do a... I like to play songs, but this minor's sounding different from the other B minor. Sounding different, sounding different like this G that I'm going to, but if we made it minor, yeah, we made it minor. Yeah. Okay, so with uh, you know, those lyrics, uh, what I mean by you, fast chord, you know, yes. well, yeah, like that bonus, even you singing, right? That's a yeah. bonus. So that even if they just strum that song, yeah, yeah, just we would be like, be oh, good. yeah, yeah, we'll send you, you something it. or like, good well, job. You know, <laughs> yeah. so our uh, fast chord changes. Usually we wait like four beats. So one, two, three, four, one, two. So basically anything less than four, I would consider a fast chord change. So one, two. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. If you can do one beat, that's all good. One, two, three. That's a, that's one. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So that's like a mm -hmm. one beat chord change. If you can do it two beats, good. Three beats fine. Basically, anything shorter than four beats, all good. So that's uh, that's my challenge. That kind of plays into the Beatles too, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking that. <laughs> yeah, they, they they do use like a lot of uh, fast chord changes, fast chord changes, and then chords that are like in between chords of mm -hmm. two two chords. So. So this is your challenge for the next three weeks. So ours is doing two weeks. And uh, yours is due in three weeks. So three weeks from now, Thursday. Uh, I don't know, Aaron, you're not going to be here, are you? Um, or you will be here because I think you would just arrive that Wednesday night. Two weeks from now? Uh, no, I'm not going to be so here. So you're not going to be here. Okay, 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 okay. Well, we'll give everyone three weeks then. <laughs> three weeks. And so is the audience. <laughs> I guess it's due the same time okay. as for the audience. So three weeks. Now let's just make it four weeks for the audience. Yes, <laughs> four weeks for the audience. Three weeks for us, four weeks for the audience. You want to do the, the bonus uh, melody that we talked about too? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. That's right, that's right. So, um, melody. If you, uh, if you can put this in your song, it's all good. So this is in D. So let's do a, a, an easy one. Um, uh. No. So seriously, two notes. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, and then hit it twice again, and then to the fifth, um to the seventh fret, and back to the fifth fret. Ba -da 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 -ba 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 -da. You can also do it here. Nice and simple. Okay, we're not gonna make it complicated. Like, have this and in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's like da -da 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 -da. we'll save that for another <laughs> challenge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you have your challenges. Go forth and create some music, my darlings. Okay. So that's uh, that's it. I'll just I'll write down um, riff. That was uh, D D D D E D E D D D D D E D. Nice and simple. Dead. All right. So that's the riff. Yeah. It, it'll be fun like when we bring back our songs to see mm -hmm. how like if we incorporate the riff 
and how close it is to the actual riff. Because I wonder if it's like a game of telephone, right? Like, it keep, like as it keeps <laughs> yeah, getting true. further and further, it's like, oh, it's a little different. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't remember the F sharp being in there, but okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> Pretty sure it's just two notes. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading us. Thank you for signing up for UU Plus and watching the video. Um, stick around for the one-on-one -on -one coaching. We are going to be doing it at 2.15 till whatever time we're done. Um, tomorrow, we have Aloha Friday Live concert. So come one, come all. We're going to be jamming for you for an hour. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be giving away some stuff tomorrow as well. So it's, a, it's going to be really good because I can just whatever I was going to bring for today, I'll just bring a bunch so that we can give away tomorrow. Okay? Oh. Huh? No, no, no! It's um, it's a mystery what they get, right? Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. I keep it a, so keep it a secret. It's a secret. May it might be something from the things tomorrow, but it's not. It yet. might rhyme with hurricane dapcorn. <laughs> 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 Whatever that is, <laughs> dapcorn. Okay. okay. Pop schmorn. <laughs> Burkane Pop Schmort. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to get a What could that be? Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's a Hawaii, Hawaii snack, but that's your clues. <laughs> Give uh, a couple of those, okay? We'll see you folks next time. Have a great one. Check out all our awesome new content on Upalala Underground. Uh, we'll see you folks next time. Also, it's, it's almost the end of the month, so that means it's time for a brand new lesson, which is we're very, very, very excited about. So uh, check that out. Yes, Kahai. No, I was just gonna say Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, yeah, yeah. Saturday brand new, uh, brand new lesson. We have a new, uh, um, we have a new challenge that came out about a week ago. We have lots of cool stuff. So check it, uh, check it out. Keep it locked in here on Ukulele Underground. We'll see you folks next time. Aloha.